call this meeting of the Ohio County Fiscal Court to order on this July the 24th, 2018, 5 p.m. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Magistrate Larry Morphew to lead us in a prayer and a pledge to the flag. Father, we just come before you tonight thanking you, Lord, for the many blessings, everything you do for us, Lord. And God, we just ask you to be with us tonight as we do the county's affairs. Give us the strength, the courage, and the wisdom to do it in a pleasing manner to you. For all this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Larry. First thing you have uh, tonight is the minutes of the uh, July 10th, 2018 minutes. I need a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Sam Small. Second by Joe Barnes. Is there any discussion, <laughs> uh, corrections, or additions? Judge, I just have a comment or a little commentary I want to make. And it deals with the FEMA monies. And if you recall... The previous motions at our last uh, meeting and the one prior to that, uh, we discussed the uh, separation of the FEMA monies that will be forthcoming. Uh, I feel like I've been hoodwinked, but and I was made promises, but I have understood by being on the court as long as I have that there have been a lot of promises made that hadn't been kept, and and uh, and I'm sure that it will still be in the future if you stay on the court long enough. But I just wanted to make mention of that. It's the way I feel, and I feel like I had to, uh, I had to say that. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Minutes are approved. Before you, you have the bills claimed for payments and transfers. Uh, need a motion to approve those. So moved. Motion by Larry Morphew. Second. Second by Sam Small. Um, is there any discussion? Being none, roll call, Miranda. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Count? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Um, we need the second reading of. of uh, Ordinance 2019-1, that's the budget amendment that we passed at the last meeting, and I need a second reading on that. Approved. Need a motion. I make a motion. Motion Sam Small. Have a second. What? Get the refresh room. What? What's that? That's uh, amending in all of our surplus money and then to work on I'll second. I'll second. second. I got Joe Barnes' second. Just want to make sure. Okay. Like I said, the same thing we did two weeks ago. Go ahead and roll call. Barnes? Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Count? No. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Uh, motion carries. Uh, Okay, before you have the treasurer's uh, settlement for the year 2018, this is the big one for the year. Of course, it's subject to audit, but we need to uh, recognize that we received it. Make so moved. Motion, technology. motion by Joe Barnes, second by Larry Cowan. Uh, any questions for Ann or any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. No. Is it coming? Uh, I've got an introduction to make and an apology. Uh, we're having technology problems, but I'm sure that we can we can make it work. Uh, but I want to introduce to you uh, Ben Chandler. Uh, I hope everybody knows that name. 
yes, he is the Chandler family of Kentucky and uh, has held a lot of public offices. And uh, uh, I'm afraid I'll leave one out if I try to name them all, but, but he's a well-known man in the state, and we're just very lucky and very proud to have him here today. Ben? I've got your PowerPoint here. It's just not connecting through the floor to there. <laughs> it's not working. So, okay. You got the your PowerPoint list. is not working. Pointer. Right. No, the PowerPoint works. But not you, you there. Get, right, right. So nobody can really see it. Right, right. except right. on that screen there. Well, it's minor detail. Okay, good deal. Good deal. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, Judge, I'm grateful for you giving me an opportunity to be here uh, today. It, I want to talk to you about something that I think is very important. And, and you're right, I've held a number of offices here in Kentucky so, uh, enough to be able to tell you that, that I'm not sure I know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> it's still at this point. Yes. And uh, now I'm in a new one. I am the president of the Foundation for a Healthy Kentucky, and that's a statewide organization. I'll tell you about that in a minute, but uh, uh, thank you and the magistrates, uh, the, the fiscal court, for inviting me here tonight. Uh, I really do appreciate that, and I appreciate you being willing to listen to what I've got to talk about. And I'll try to, to be as uh, brief as I possibly can. Uh, the Foundation for a Healthy Kentucky is a nonprofit and nonpartisan foundation. Uh, we, uh, we have one goal, one goal and one goal only, and that is the goal of uh, trying to improve the health of our people here in Kentucky, and uh, on a number of different fronts. And as you can imagine, here in Kentucky, it's a tremendous challenge. We are not the healthiest group of people in the world. Uh, in fact, we bring up the rear in most statistics. Uh, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to promote public policies that will lead to better health. Uh, that, that's the main thrust of what our organization is trying to do. And the emphasis, our first emphasis, has been on tobacco reduction. Why is that? Uh, it's because Kentucky presently is the cancer capital of the United States of America. Now, I, one thing I think that all of us have in common is that we love our state and we love our people. And I don't think it's tolerable for us to carry on having the highest rate of cancer in this nation. And there are very few families that I know of that haven't been impacted by it in one way or another. It's a terrible thing. And uh, what I can tell you is that there's actually something that we can do about it. And, and I want to just mention the numbers here in o Ohio County. As I told you, Kentucky leads the nation in cancer. Well, Ohio County's rate of cancer is even higher than Kentucky's. And I had a slide to show you that. Uh, and uh, I, I'm afraid if they I, want to look at it, I got the number. If you right all, there. yeah, well, yeah. At, at some point, I'd like for you all to look at it. Uh, but Ohio County is is considerably above the rest of the state in cancer incidences of cancer, and of course, the state leads the nation. Ohio County's smoking rate is a full seven percent above Kentucky's. And Kentucky also leads the nation in smoking. Now, why is that important? Because 34% of cancer, of cancer cases, are tied to smoking. A full third of all cancers are attributable to smoking. Now, what that tells me is that a third of our cancers are preventable. That's what that tells me. So, uh, what do we... What do we need to do about it? Well, the first thing I want to tell you is, is that uh, over 10,000 Kentuckians died of cancer this year. And just about that many died from smoking-related illnesses. Smoking-related illnesses cause more deaths in Kentucky than suicides, murders, automobile accidents, drug overdoses, and gun deaths combined. And did you all, you all got that? 
That, that's pretty amazing as far as I'm concerned. It's an incredible toll, and I don't think the people in Kentucky realize what a heavy toll it takes on our state. And I, I want uh, everybody to understand that. The Journal of the American Medical Association last year did a study, a national study, and it showed that since 1980, cancer mortality in the United States of America has declined by 20%, except in Kentucky. They actually singled us out as the prime place in this nation where cancer deaths have actually risen at the same time that they're going down by 20% in the rest of the country. Now, I would respectfully submit to you all that all of us ought to do what we can to do something about that. And there is, uh, there is very definitely something that we can do about that. Uh, what we can do, and I'm going to skip over some of this stuff, uh, I've got some slides about e-cigarettes. Uh, they are not helpful either, mainly because there is a high prevalence of use of e-cigarettes by young people. And that's what we mainly don't want. We, we want to stop people from smoking at a young age. We want to keep them from smoking in the first place, basically. The statistics show that 95% of smokers start before they're 18 years old. So if we can get them early and keep them from starting to begin with, that's a good thing. Well, the trouble with these cigarettes, they're full of nicotine, and they are proven to be a gateway to smoking for young people. So we want to include those uh, in any efforts that we try to make to reduce the smoking rates. Um, Kentucky also, I might tell you, has a, an extremely high rate of smoking during pregnancy. And uh, our rate in some counties is as high as 40% of women who are pregnant smoke. Uh, Ohio County's rate, again, is above the state rate. More women smoke in Ohio County than do in the rest of the state on average. So that's just another reason. Economically, and this is a point I, I want to very strongly make, economically, and the state chamber will tell you this, uh, the state chamber is a partner of ours in our coalition to try to take on the smoking problem. They want to do something about it because they know that if you have an unhealthy workforce, it's going to be hard for you to attract jobs to your county. Why is that? Well, it's because if, if a worker, in particular, if you've got a lot of smokers, you've got lower productivity on the front end and you've got higher health care costs on the back end for those businesses. And that's what the business community will tell you uh, without exception, that it is not a helpful thing. And counties who go smoke free have a leg up. They have a leg up in, in economic development. And that, again, don't ask, uh, you don't have to take my word for it, ask the state chamber. They'll be happy to, to weigh in on that subject. So, uh, there are a couple of things that we can do that will reduce the smoking rate and ultimately the cancer rate here in Kentucky and they don't cost the taxpayers anything. That's the beauty about it. It's at no cost to the taxpayers. You try to do something about the drug problem, you try to do something about uh, diabetes or heart disease or a lot of other problems that we've got, it's going to cost you a lot of money to do something about those problems. But this is one that we can affect at no cost to the taxpayer. And we think that is very, very important. One of the things that we can do to reduce the smoking rate is to raise the tax on cigarettes. Now, you all will be happy to know that you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> that's, that's something that has to be done on the state level. And uh, we have already done something about that in the last session. And you may have seen where the cigarette tax was raised by 50 cents. Uh, and we hope that that will have some helpful effect. But the other thing that you can do is you can 
pass a smoke-free ordinance here in Ohio County. If you did it, a comprehensive smoke-free ordinance, if you could pass one, you would be the sixth county in the state to do so. Out of the 120 counties right now, five have smoke-free ordinances, and that uh, comprehensive smoke-free ordinances, I should say. They are Fayette County, Jefferson County, Woodford, and Oldham, which are right next to Fayette and Jefferson, and Hardin County. So you'd be the furthest one in Kentucky west and uh, it would, I think, be a very big deal in Kentucky if you all would do that. Now, I assume that you're familiar with what a smoke-free ordinance is, but all we're talking about is indoor build, in indoors, inside buildings that are uh, accessible to the public. That's what we're talking about. It doesn't mean that you can't, you can still smoke outdoors. You can still smoke at home. You can still smoke in your car. You just can't smoke where other people are closed in a place where they have to breathe somebody else's smoke, secondhand smoke. That's what it's all about. And it has been proven in studies, which we can get to you, to cut the smoking rate and ultimately the cancer rate in counties that uh, adopt it. We actually have figures on that. Uh, and again, it doesn't cost the taxpayers a single penny to adopt that ordinance and you will actually do something to affect the smoking and cancer rates in your county. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, Mr. Chandler, the last time that uh, this was brought before the court in discussion and it was looked into, I think Mr. Bullock brought us a ordinance and it had it said that you could be punishable 25 feet from the front door of, a, of an independent business. And now uh, you are saying now that it can be at the front door with it, the You can write your ordinance uh, really however you want to write it, yeah. is the truth of it. Now we would we would prefer to have a little space, yeah. certainly, but uh, but you don't have to to have that. And I think you can customize yeah. it the way you want to in that yeah. regard. What we're mainly interested in are indoor spaces. I know we all know the pitfalls of smoking, and, we, and we'd like to see everybody quit, and I don't think there's an individual up here on the court that does smoke. Uh, but having said that, it's, uh, it's uh, the, the government telling an individual if he owns a service station, and he sits down to have him a sandwich for dinner, and he wants to bring him out a cigar and smoke it, and... I have a real problem with government telling him that in his own business that he pays taxes on, he makes a living for his family, that he can't sit back and enjoy a cigar. You know what I mean? So, uh, but we all, like I say, we all understand the pitfalls of smoking, that smoking is no good for us, that uh, so much health cost is associated with smoking. Uh, I think what government needs to do, and this is my personal opinion, they look at, they need to look at ways for an individual have you ever smoked, Mr. Chandler? Yes. Look for ways that can alter a, man, a person's mind or whatever. But I, I used to smoke, and it's the most addictive thing that I ever put in my mouth. Tremendously so. And uh, but it's it's so difficult to quit. And I went and picked up a uh, had a friend of mine had an accident out here by the uh, tow road about two weeks ago, and he's homebound. He wanted me to go get him some cigarettes, and I did. And I bought three packs of cigarettes and there's $22. You know, that would be, a, that's almost enough reason for me to quit to start with. But, but the, the, I guess the, the point I'm trying to make is how do we go about as government to be able to help people to quit smoking? Well, we're trying to do that. Uh, the health departments around the state, yeah. uh, they sponsor smoking cessation efforts. Yeah. One of the difficulties that we've had and I think this should be a concern of everybody. Tobacco companies have actually infused extra nicotine oh, I'd say that's into true. their products for the sole purpose of addicting people. Yeah. If you now, I've got a problem with that. Yeah. And not when you don't even know that something's being put in a product yeah. and they're doing it for the sole purpose of addicting you to that product. That's a big problem. Yeah. If you remember, that that eats into my independence. Yeah. If you <laughs> can, 
if you can remember, it may have been 10, 12, 15 years ago, I can't recall the exact date, where they had uh, five CEOs of, uh, of the tobacco companies and they were in front of a congressional hearing and they were asking them about nicotine being addictive and every one of them uh, said no. Yeah, if you recall, and seen it on television, I where it said, no, nicotine is not addictive. And I said, my gosh. How can they sit up there and say that anybody that's ever smoked in this audience or whatever knows the uh, addiction that nicotine is to it? So. Yeah. Um, well, you're exactly right. And what we would try, what we would like to do is have a full program to try to encourage people to quit the habit because it's very expensive. Every household, now this gets into the whole idea of telling people what to do. Uh, Everybody, including the people who don't smoke, have to pay about $1,200 a year to pay so other people can. Yeah. That's how much your health uh, insurance is jacked up for everybody on average. <coughs> so we've got to pay. You think it's not affecting the rest of us. Well, it is. It's affecting our freedom. So I agree with you about the freedom, saying somebody ought to have freedoms, <coughs> reasonable freedoms, but I only agree to that up to a point where it affects my freedom. And that's, you know, that's I'm what sick. we've always wrestled with in this society is, is your freedoms extend to the end of my nose. Yes. And, and that's, uh, and I'm all for that. But in this particular case, there are a couple of things. Number one, you've got uh, this problem that we're paying for these people to smoke. And despite the fact that we'd rather hold on to that money, probably. And then the other thing is the secondhand smoke issue. If you say, okay, you've got the freedom to smoke in a public building, a building where pub the public is allowed, what about the person who goes in and doesn't want to breathe the smoke? I would just soon not breathe it. It's not good for me. And, and I think there are a lot of people who feel that way. Another point that I, that I want to make, I think it's important to make, we have been polling this issue just to kind of get a handle on what the public thinks of it generally, and it's really been interesting. Uh, our latest statewide poll showed that 71% of the people in Kentucky are in favor of these smoke-free laws, which I don't know about you, but it's hard to get 71% of the folks to agree on anything. And, uh, and the other interesting thing about it is it cuts across party lines. Independent, Republican, Democrat, they're all right around 70%. So it's really, if there ever was a nonpartisan <coughs> issue, this is it. Yeah. Doesn't matter what party you belong to, you've generally got the same attitude on this issue. Our poll showed about that, right, Ann? The one we'd done a few years ago, it was about 70 uh, so we had so it's thing here. consistent, I think, all over the whole state how people feel about it. It's actually a popular thing to do. Uh, but I would also just submit to you that uh, you're protecting a whole lot of people in your community. You're also, and that's on one side of the ledger, you're protecting people in the community. You're uh, helping your community in terms of attracting jobs in terms of the economy, you're saving a whole lot of people money, and then on the other side of the scale, you've got somebody wanting to smoke where they want to. You're not telling them they don't, they can't smoke, just, you know, go a few feet away and sit outdoors. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're, you're right, you're right, Sand, when you infringe upon others. Uh, this is what you were saying earlier, so. Right. But down the strip here, and I know even up in our little town, uh, I don't know of a place that allows you to smoke in any any restaurant or no. or anything on all all the strip down 231. And, and, so. and, I, and I think that probably is a case. restaurant in Ohio County. And I don't know if they I don't know if it's actually they say smoke free, but people have been pretty respectful on that, I believe. But the only thing I've got a question for you is if this ordinance was passed, the people run a business out of their home. The way I understand it, if they're a smoker, then they'll be fined because they run the business out of their home. Now, I don't, I, I, I think that that can be dealt with. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it, it, dep it depends on your particular ordinance. But I, but I think, you know, if the general public 
is allowed as a general matter into the business and business hours or if you have employees yeah. who might be uh, subject to that smoke then I think you'd probably be under it. Uh, on the other hand if it's just you if you have an internet business or something like that in your home and it's just you running it I, yeah. I doubt that it would fall into the you know surveying business out of your home or something like that you're not subjected to a great big deal of clientele but you know you're going to have people come to your business so well if people are I would assume that if people were welcome to come to your business as customers or employees you would fall under the ordinance yeah okay. which is a little bit different than a real home I mean it is a, a real business then with, with customers yeah and so well you know if you looked at it. I know what uh, my uh, lady friend had a, she has a smoke shop and but she has no smoking in it because she has other things and she don't want the, uh, any smell of smoke or whatever to land on the things other things she's going to sell but that gets back to the to my point that it's it's her choice not government's choice well i understand that uh and again i would i would submit to you and i, I really do understand that point of view but we make choices all the time uh, we've got stoplights for instance and that that's the government telling people they can go or not go well you know, we've got stop signs we've got a, a huge variety of things we've got safety inspections of people's business telling them how they can handle their equipment within yeah. their own business let me say this it's a, it's the facts statistical facts that proves that uh, number one cause of diabetes in this country is cokes beverages and things of that nature but do we as government do we as they did in New York limit the size or whatever I mean I think you have to change people's habits and I, I don't mm -hmm. know how you do that you'd be more to know what I do but you have to change people's habit, yeah. habits from drinking too many cokes yeah. or cigarettes yeah. or whatever gay I think you can do anything within the legal legal law as long as you do it in moderation yeah. well I agree with that but, yeah. uh, on on this particular right. subject we're fighting folks though who are addicting us yeah. And I'm it's not a little bit different. Me yeah. drinking a Coke's not going to hurt Perfect. me. Right. So if I smoke a cigarette, cigarette, it will hurt her. Well, that's right. It, it is a different thing. Yeah, but it'll, it'll run current. my insurance cost up because she's got diabetes. I mean, if well, you want to put well, it that and, way. Uh, well, and, and I'm not sitting here, don't get me wrong, Mr. Chandler, I'm not sitting here defending tobacco in any way. It's not that. It's yeah. all about just well, the oh, choice and free. I understand, and, and that's, you know, there are a lot of people who feel that way, but uh, I, I would just submit to you that we make decisions like that as a community. What you all are is you're the representatives of your community. That's what a government is, the representatives of that community. And we're making decisions all the time, having served in government myself. Yes, you have. We make decisions that we believe are in the best interests of the people who live in our community and hopefully we have the support of our community to do that and typically we make decisions on behalf of the majority of the people and we don't let one or two or however many people keep us from making decisions that are good for everybody now we don't want to make a bad decision you know we don't want to make a decision that isn't good for our community but it, it's always been my view that if there is something that is demonstrably good for the community we ought to consider seriously consider doing it on behalf of the people who live in that community yeah yeah i just i don't see in the uh issue when i go into all the businesses in ohio county smoking problem it's not well and, and of I course there's a few that i know that you know maybe has it but uh uh, I don't know that. which ought to make it easy for you all to do this <laughs> you know, yeah. there ought not be too much political yeah. pushback well, the only thing I have is the issue about the uh, running a business out of your home to possibly yeah. small could. business and then you're, you're yeah. cutting into their rights possibly could so look at that five counties that have passed this their ordinances that they have passed how far do they go with it <coughs> well the main question what I'm getting at is I'm walking down the street. I do actually smoke some. You know, that happens. Uh, I, I dip tobacco all the time. You know, I ain't scared to tell you that. I mean, I'm not proud of well, it, but I, I mean, it's just fine. Yeah. 
But if I want to walk up and down the street and light up a cigarette, how far does this order? How far do you want to push that order? Well, that's up to you. You all have to decide where you want the ordinance to go. But the health department here uh, has model ordinances available for you all to look at. Uh, I don't have one in front of me right now. <coughs> but I, I was just wondering, Jim Rock, if the other five that have it, how far did they make it? We actually have an, an ordinance. It's, and I've got it on my laptop. I can get it for you. And we looked at the other ones, and they were similar to about what we said 25 about 25 foot from the front door of a, of a business. I'm Jason Block. I was actually one of the ones for smoke free, still am. I do wish the state would man up and do their part. And, and well, we do on. too. We but, do I too. mean, you know, it fall back. And I, I will say, I appreciate Ohio County Smoke Free because when they did start this, we had several restaurants that, 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 that were smoked, and now we're, we're down to nothing. So, you know, they, they have worked hard and uh, appreciate their hard work. But. Yes. I do think sometimes when you, I know you don't want to take rights away, but when you open up to a public, you start being a family business, you do lose some rights a little bit because when you open up to the public, laws say, for health reasons, here's why you have to do what you have to and do. You're exactly right. Okay. You already, there are a number of regulations that you have to follow if you open your business up to the public. Yes. Quite a number. Uh, what I'm going to offer here, I'd like to, we, we do have a smoke free uh, committee in place. <coughs> Uh, it's not met for a while. Uh, I would like to charge that committee with meeting and looking at the ordinance and bring it back here on the September 11th. And at that time, we would have a one hour public uh, discussion on it prior to it, and then we'd present the ordinance. Well, that's the charges I'm leaving with the committee. Let's, um, while, I'm, while we're here, so that would be August the September the 11th is when we're going to. No, do. I'm saying to have a meeting. Okay, <coughs> so here, August the 14th at four o'clock here before the. Do I? I'll, I'll get the list, but I know the several. I know Becky's here. on it. She's here. Yeah. We haven't met in a long time. I actually since yeah, this court probably, but to, uh, I will get it. Time. But we'll do it four o'clock on the fourteenth of August. We won't have a meeting the fourteenth. We'll, we'll be we'll be in conference in Louisville that week. So when do we know when we're rescheduling the for the twenty-first? Okay. Twenty-first. You could still meet on the fourteenth. I think you're just going to miss a couple members. And not only in, 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 nobody in here is on that. Let's just do the 21st. <coughs> okay. 21st at 4 o'clock before the board meeting. Okay. When is the and, w and you get, yeah. You get with, uh, with Jay, Jason, get a list of the committee and send it out to notice to them. Okay. You. <coughs> okay. So 21st at 4 o'clock, and uh, uh, we'll find a list of the members of Miranda and send out notice to them. Okay. And you guys are welcome to them. And we'll run it up the flagpole here on September the 11th. Well, Judge, thank you very much for that. And, and one of the reasons why we think it's important to, to, for, for the fiscal courts to make a public yeah, we're having a special decision on it 17. is because it's a we're, signal we're, that you send to the young one in August. And that's, the, that's really the population that we are want to target. We want to make we're sure that young one. people don't yeah, start in the first place. And if we can do that, we can solve a lot of this problem as we move forward. <coughs> yeah, and that's the, to yeah, move it up so that we can have the bills paid on time, the 28th is too late to work. Or in a house, they don't have, they don't have a lot of choice. That develops over years of being in the <laughs> I don't know how you protect them. With well, you don't with this, but what you hopefully do is you lower your smoking you rate, smoke so there are few people, fewer people who expose their children to that. And that's what you hope you do. You can't do it all. I mean, we learned from prohibition in the 1920s that you can't outlaw something like this; it just won't work. So you have to look for other ways to try to to change the the community standards i guess that's what you're talking about how does the community feel about these things and if the community looks on it as something that people ought not do over time fewer people will do it 
Yeah, and well, that's not the way an individual right for somebody. Yeah. That's their individual right. But when you when you open up the public, you know, you're taking away other people's rights. Well, that's exactly right. And by the way, it would be very fitting for Ohio County to do this because your namesake, the entire state of Ohio, has done this. <laughs> so Thank there you. you are. Do you know how much money? My last question would be: Do you know how much money is being put into research? Uh, to something to combat the addiction of nicotine? I, I don't know. I know that if you start there, if you could finally come up with something and start there, then that would eliminate anything beyond. Well, but I, 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 that's the reason I, I just wondered, even on the federal level, state level, how much money is being put into research to to somehow Well, I can assure you not help the addiction. And, and one of the things that you run into is that the tobacco companies make a concerted so. effort to prevent that. And particularly at the state level, they spent twice as much in this last session on lobbying as anybody else, any other interest in Frankfurt. The tobacco companies spent double what anybody else did. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that money is spent to try to prevent some of this information, some of the research, money, money spent on research and so forth. So, you know, it, it's uh, not easy. It's not easy for those of us on this side of it to tackle the problem because, quite frankly, the tobacco companies have a whole lot more money than the advocates of, of smoke-free or, or people who are trying to get people to quit have. Uh, so it's an uphill battle. Have any other counties added anything to their ordinances, uh, like broadening them as far as, like, um smoking with minors in the vehicle or anything like that to broaden the location not just restaurants and I, I think actually foreign got some foreign governments have done that I'm not sure whether our uh, didn't touch, ours didn't, the one we had didn't touch that no. it was more yeah. of a public business uh, yeah. and I think uh, the biggest uh, thing that we had that we had the most complaints about was the buffer zone outside the door yeah. if we can look at maybe narrowing that down a little bit from 25 to 10 or 15. That might make it more palatable. Uh, before, uh, Mr. Chandler, we did have a public hearing here, had a, nearly a full building, and uh, we allowed an hour's worth of speaking, and we'd get one pro and one con and let them speak for, for that whole hour. So we did put a lot of time into this, into, into this issue. And in the bottom of it, I wish now we would have went ahead and moved on it, but we didn't. Uh, but we did a, just a polling of our court. And uh, uh, Mr. Bullock and myself were the only two that were actually wanted to pass it in the form it was at that time. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping now that maybe we can get to where it would be more palatable to others. And that was the last word. Uh, I think that would be wonderful if we could. And if yeah. there's anything that we can do to help in that process to make it more palatable, we'd certainly like to do it. And I know Becky and your coalition here uh, would very much like to do that. Uh, we just think it, it would uh, be quite good for the county. And, and as I said, I think it would also provide you a little boost in economic development. Because there are not very many other counties that have done it. And particularly in a county where you really don't have much in the way of businesses that allow it, uh, it really shouldn't be too terribly difficult for you all politically. In those areas, in um, Woodford, Lexington, and all this kind of, do they have a designated area at factories or something like that? The city of or, Orangeboro does. Do you know most of those? Davis County, the city there, of Orangeboro. No, no. Orangeboro Davis County Hospital, you don't smoke on the ground. I think that they can you have a designated in? area if it's outdoors, and I yeah. think some of them may have that. Yeah, I think it has to be away from the front entrance as well. Mm -hmm. And I know there's only six counties, but there's several <laughs> cities that have adopted this. Right. Their own Quite a number of cities have. Paducah and Murray. Uh, just this year, both of Paducah's made, made theirs comprehensive. They strengthened it. They had some exceptions, and then they strengthened it. And Murray just flat out adopted a, a comprehensive smoke-free ordinance. So it can be done, and it's being done around the state. Uh, we just haven't had very many counties do it, and it's preferable for a county to do it because then it covers all the cities. Yeah. Uh, so. We, we would really like that if we could get it. But we're, we would love to work with you and help in any way we can. 
uh, it, it would be wonderful and I think it'd be a great thing if Ohio County could do it. Yeah. I guess my point is that we can do these things in which would be helpful, there's no question. Uh, but the addiction is so bad that, and the irony of it is, like in doctors, nurses that I've seen that smoke and they deal with the operations that they have lung cancer, whatever the case may do, they do that on a daily basis, yet they go outside and they smoke and it. I just firmly want to make the point that how addictive it is. Well, it, it, you're exactly right. But that's where I think research needs to be made and I'd like to see this court. Uh, well, you know, they're, uh, put, they're putting nicotine in the e-cigarettes. Yeah. They're oh, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. So it, it is tremendously addictive. There's no question about that. And the General Assembly actually passed a law that required uh, insurance plans to pay for cessation programs mm -hmm. to help people quit. Yeah. Uh, so that's one thing that's been done. But I would also say, while it is addictive, all we're really doing with this ordinance is telling people we're just making it a little less convenient. We're not telling them they can't continue with their addiction. We're just telling them they need to go outdoors, which is really not, I don't think, that much to ask. Or protecting other people's rights. That's it. We're but, protecting other people's rights by making it just a little more inconvenient. Yeah. But I'd like to see, on my side of the argument is that something needs to be done, research or whatever, a letter from this court to encourage our legislature to uh, put monies into research yeah. to help the person that's addicted to nicotine. Well, I'm all for We're that. that. <laughs> I, I think everybody's for that. Yeah. I think that's a wonderful thing if we could get that done. We Historically, we have had a terrible time getting the legislature to put any money into co tobacco control efforts. Yeah. And I understand lobbying. We all know that. We see how much money's put into <laughs> well, that's, it. That's a big efforts have been made to get more money uh, to put, be put in that direction. And uh, I mean, the health uh, advocate folks here can tell you that the tobacco settlement from uh, money, for instance, yeah. uh, there was an effort to get a, a, a decent chunk of that and it failed. Yeah. Uh, almost a, a whole half of it goes to the farmers, yeah. which is not bad. I have to tell you, I think that's actually a good thing to diversify agriculture. But with the other half, you ought to be able to slice a little bit off. I would agree. To do this. Anyway, thank you all. Thank, I thank really you. Appreciate thank you, your Mr. Chairman. And, and you listening to me. Uh, uh, very grateful for your consideration of this. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. And thank grateful you. for the work that everybody's done. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Uh, Rip. Our jailer Rip Wright has a presentation to make. Uh, not as pleasant as this one was. But and I got one question for you, Rip. Did you bring pizza? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 I want to make the fish court more aware of what's going on. The population in the jails is growing rapidly. I've got 13 people in Christian County right now. Mm. We've been high as 70 in our jail right now, plus 12 that's over in Christie County. And we didn't take that into consideration when we did the budget. Poor old call me. And uh, it was about $50,000 more a year. Uh, we didn't put that in the budget. We wasn't aware of it until we started seeing the paperwork come in. So uh, we have to come up with some idea how we can bring up some more money to cover for the other in the incarcerations. Are they all violent? Or can we put some out on ankle bracelets? <laughs> well, I don't like the county attorney is. Well, we, we, there is two entities over in Owensboro that were that could do the ankle bracelets. I think it was ten to twelve dollars a day. Um, one of them just came to see me. And I think Tracy could tell us uh, it was a right, retired state trooper uh, who came to see me that was setting that program up. Uh, and he could monitor it, and it could also tell a victim if they were if they were a victim of some type of assault or a DVO violation that that person was getting within a certain range of them. So it seemed to be a very good program. Uh, however, he's no longer doing it. Uh, the judge and I, um, and that's what I've recently heard that he's not that he's not going to be monitoring. 
Um, the judge and I have discussed, and, and we could we could certainly, if the judge wants to set a committee or, or, or do things to maybe offset some of these costs that I know are costing the rip, um, <clears throat> to buy our own ankle bracelets, uh, to have someone employed to monitor. Uh, there is a there is a private sector uh, that could possibly make money on this, and I think we were hoping that, especially when one started that program. Uh, but we have just not been able to assure those victims of assault, DVOs, that they are properly monitored, if not for the ankle bracelets. Have we talked to any of the other jails that's done it? Because me and Larry went to one of these seminars. That's the president of the jail administration said that's the number one thing to do to decrease the amount of people in your jail. Oh, absolutely. So, Hancock County was doing it for a while, but they had so many on their program. Uh, that they couldn't they couldn't help us out in Ohio County anymore because we had one or two from Hank that, that Hancock County was monitoring. But that's not just the problem. The problem also lies with the judge to go along with this program. Uh, if you know we're going to go to the station on a bit medical bill. These are things that we can't help. I can't help. The judge ain't going to let him out. And I don't blame him not letting him out when it's for murder or right. assault of a juvenile. But We've looked at that, and as a matter of fact, I've had it one time. But then again, this the program they had back then wasn't very good as watching it. Who's out on bond? Who's out on, on monitor? Uh, I come to y'all to ask for some help, some advice. Cost of cost as uh, for if this uh, ankle bracelet comes about, we can work up some. Rip, do you have any idea what the cost would be on as far as the bracelet, the monitor, and the whole nine yards as far as expense compared to the uh, twenty dollars or whatever? It's about like twenty five dollars a day. Yeah. Oh, so and what does it cost if we got them at McLean? Or uh, twenty two sixty six. Twenty two sixty six. It's not a it's not a cost savings. It, Except for transport. Then, Saves the exactly transport. Twenty five dollars a day for the monitors, monitoring team. So it actually costs more, but like the judge says, the transportation end of it. But I never have understood with the technology we've got today and the screens, you can look at an inmate and the judge can sit there, and I never did understand all this transportation end of it. They don't want to use it. I know they don't. But yeah, the, the, I think Tracy and I have even talked uh, about the possibility of, of approaching the judges and trying to encourage that a little bit more uh, where we could do arraignments. Uh, because it's tough on Tracy and his staff to drive to Christian County, to drive to Davis County. Yeah. Uh, Rip also has to find places to house these inmates because they're only going to hold a number of them. And, and as a county attorney, we have to take a lot of these crimes very serious and, 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 and ensure that any victim of assault or DVO is protected. And the only way we can ensure that sometimes is through incarceration. And if we had ankle bracelets where the victim could certainly see uh, we certainly have to know that the person is not around them. It would it would help us tremendously to be able to uh, well, to tell them. Know, other places use it. So how come they don't want to use it here? As far as the uh, I don't it, our, the what they installed they installed this some time ago. It's my understanding prior to, to me becoming county attorney. I think they installed some program or, or installed some cameras there. I just don't know if they've tried it in a while. And uh, I think that's why Tracy and I were going to try to, to meet with the judge and, and probably Rip would, would, would be helped if he was there. And he, I don't imagine he would have any problem being there. And uh, I can certainly approach them to be able to, to, to see if we can get this going. And the, and the court, along with AOC, could maybe um, share in some of those costs if we need to upgrade that equipment. Um, but, I mean, the, uh, Davis County is able to, aren't they? Yeah, but keep in mind, we're just, you just talking maybe 10 maybe on the house rest. We still got 20 more coming to there somewhere. That's got to go somewhere else. Uh, yeah, it just eliminates the transportation. Don't eliminate the prisoner, does it? So, so we're kind of pickles. So. Yeah. Um, I think we need to go. We'll go back and visit with Judge Coleman again and the, and the Commonwealth Attorney and Justin, like we did once before and follow up on that meeting and see why that didn't work. They were going to do some summons instead of uh, arrests on these uh, uh, indictments and things like that would have really cut down on your 
population. They, they did that for a little while. And but that's not the county attorney that makes that decision. No, I know so that. That's, no, that's it not. Is. Yeah, that's not <laughs> I know, I know right now need to be paid. But we want you in on the, that's when we had the meeting, though. There's going to have to be some, some amount of money transferred in there tonight because there are inmates elsewhere that we are going to owe a bill on. Yeah, where have you got them on that, Rip? Christian County got most of them. Christian County. But Webster's County got one, maybe. We're running out of room, everybody oh. is. No, you've been overloaded for whenever. Yeah. Uh, Davis County was taking them, but they found out Evansville pays a lot more, but the Crystal, they put a buzz out. And so Christian County was the closest place I could find. Uh, and he, he's helping himself quite a bit. Is Brackenridge County can help or will help or has helped? They're to, overcrowded too. Oh, they are? Uh, and Grayson County help. Oh, it's federal, don't they? Yes. <clears throat> so what, I mean, do we need to transfer something in? What are we looking at right now? So where are we out of that in the budget? Um, that money come from some from reserves in and... Well, I, I'll uh, if we if it's a has to and it needs to be, and I certainly believe what Rip is telling us, then I'll entertain a motion to move X amount of dollars to compensate for what uh, what the bill will be coming in and fill in his X. How much did we put in there as a budget this it's year? Seven. Seven thousand. How much did we use last year? Uh, I think we got a fifty or. Yeah. So we knew it was going to be two two. He, he's anticipating it being the same this year. Everybody, it's nice. The Jones percent predict 20% higher uh, on top of what we got right now is coming. But we, we spent about 50 last year. Mm -hmm. well, we only you want to second that motion, right? Yeah, I'll second it. Larry, second that motion, Judge. Yeah. Okay, let me, we got to get a number on it, Doug. So we pretty much knew it. Uh, Larry Cam made the motion. Larry Morphew seconded it. Now that he knows. And how much tonight? To get us through for a month. Oh, I would put twenty in there just to make sure. Okay, twenty thousand. You comfortable with that? Okay. We have a motion and second. Any more questions or discussion? Rip, don't come see us. We'll come see you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we still need to look in, even if it's ten inmates. I mean, Roll that's off. that takes uh, work off Tracy, our sheriff. It takes it saves a little bit of money off that. So I mean, right. we still need to look in. Yes. Fire. Yes. Johnson? Yes. Town? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small. Yes. Yeah, but I do think we need to look into that for breaks with Sandra. Well, well, I get the model. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next, be Jason up. Uh, and uh, some others are here for this purpose, too. You remember several months ago, we appointed a committee to look into the. Uh, uh, this animal uh, shelter and animal control and all that and to look at our ordinance, look at our policies and procedures and our job descriptions and all those things. Well, I will tell you that the results have been remarkable on what we've already done, but I wanted to get Jason to uh, t tell about the, what the committee had done over these months. Let me ask Kenny a question real quick. I've got a pamphlet here that has the yellow, the yellow highlighted. You went through and highlighted. Now that's the, the, the changes. So that's the one that's changed. So I want to tell them that's okay. You've got to shoot this question. Yeah. Guys, if you look at this sheet right here, it's one, two, three. There is a animal control ordinance and then the uh, policy and procedure manual. There are some tra changes made in those. Um, He's got a revised and unrevised copy for both of you there. I think if you look at the first one here that's highlighted, all the changes are highlighted in yellow. So if you have any questions, a lot of it is because we had to go by the KRS 258 that has to do with animal control. We just got that today. What can we gonna, have? We are going to, because Justin wants to look through it too. They're just doing a report. But I want you to look at those two, and if you have any questions, feel free to call me. But it is... We, are, we have changes for the animal control ordinance and the uh, policy and procedures manual, which are both in there with the changes. And the job description. The, well, the policy, yeah, and the job description. And, and uh, what's already been done, the cost on our vetting and the cost on 
uh, those things like that have come way down in the last uh, uh, in the last few months. Uh, the KRS Bar is not in there. He was asking me a question. The KRS in there, but it's uh, KRS 258. If you want to look up some of the rules that we went by, that we had to go by, it's uh, Kentucky Revised Statute 258. And it says that in there. We've added the definition. You know, they have definitions on this front page. It has KRS Cap 258. And it talks about the animal uh, state laws of Kentucky. There's, there's not any huge changes in there. I don't think. But there are changes. The, not as many changes in the ordinance as is in our policy. No, some policy policy procedures, procedures have more. Yeah, policy and procedures has more. And like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to call me or text me this week. But you have a revised and unrevised policy and procedure uh, too, so you can see what was changed from it and what wasn't. Okay. okay. Any questions for Jason or Kenny or Cheryl or? Matt, at this time, not will, but like we do. But want the expenses to, are way down. The expenses are way down. And we do want these proposed to the ordinance changes. Y'all can review them. We'll have to have two readings on that. We'd like to do it at this very next meeting as far as the first reading of that ordinance. And then it's by the second reading of the ordinance, we need to do the policies and procedures to prove them too. But they put a lot of work into it. And I really want to thank you. There have been a lot of people that have come into it. Uh, every uh, met pretty often. Uh, Jason and Kenny was with them. Cheryl, uh, uh, Dr. Coy St. Clair, uh, uh, Miss La uh, uh, Jeanette Lacey, and who am I leaving out, Kenny? But several people have met regularly on this. You got them. And, and, and you know, really, a lot of the changes in where we're saving some money is. People are out hustling and they're working really hard and the people with the Ohio County Humane Society are bringing in a lot of donations and a lot of help. It's, it's really helped out on finances. And we basically had no vet bills or feed bills in the last couple months. That's pretty good. And, and that was one reason we got together because of the, uh, the cost. I think we were going to go over about fourteen dollars or $15,000 last year. So... Do what? Let me shut mine off. We're about finished in it. I don't know which of yours or mine or whose it is. So we'll do this on the August 21st meeting, first reading. Yes, and all of you look it over. If you have any questions, call Kenny. He's in the office all the time. Or, you, or if you want to get to Jason, you can. But Kenny's here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If any of you have any questions, call him about it. And Kenny's put a lot of work in yes, the yeah. pipe and everything up here. So he. he He's got a pretty good handle on it. Thank you. Uh, so we definitely want to take action on that at that next meeting as far as uh, the first reading of the changes on the res on the ordinance. And if you want to, we can do the policy and procedure changes then or we can do them at the following one when we do second reading, however, whatever your pleasure is. Uh, thank you, Jason. And uh, now, I'd like a motion to go in. Uh, Justin has requested a short... Uh, uh, closed session to talk about two possible litigation issues, and he's going to invite a guest to uh, to join us. So, Mo, Mo Larry, uh, this is under section chapter one, section C and F of KRS sixty one point eighteen. Have motion go back in open session. Uh, all in favor say aye. aye. We're back in open session. I'll report for the record there was no business conducted in the meeting. We talked about two uh, litigation issues for lengthy times, and uh, that was it. Uh, give me the road department personnel. Uh, we have two gentlemen that was hired in at the road department. It's time for their, it's by the time that they've been there, it's time for their, their race to come in effect. The first one is Gerald Addington. Go, we moved him from a level one to level two, from $15.12 an hour to $15.64 an hour. Roll call. Well, uh, who's yes. that? David, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Gerald Addington, it's just oh, time for his race. Okay. It meets all of our requirements. 6, 17, 11. Yes. Hold on.
So you want to back up and back pay? Uh, back pay to 6, 17, 18. Okay. That's what we've been doing. That's what we need to okay. do. Okay. Okay, I'll put that in the status thing. So just roll call it. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Town? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Okay, so we've got one more. Uh, then we have Jed Quisenberry. Uh, same situation, but we want to back him back pay him back to seven one eighteen and his is from fourteen fifty nine to fifteen twelve. Uh, so he's a, he hasn't been here as long. So he went he went from what level to what level? Uh, from uh, higher rate, which is no level, to level one. Okay. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small. Yes. Okay, so here you go. Uh, going a little, a little bit out of order here after talking to I believe the only committees that's reported other than Larry give a real quick report because road committee did meet this afternoon just to, that we had discussion on a couple things which Larry in you, question you because you're chairman of the road you, committee part of it's Larry you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no just, just bring the uh, Though of course the court was there, but bringing the public up today, it was just we talked about chicken, chip and seed and black top, and had some people there that uh, uh, was trying to sell the county on ceiling or whatever. But if I've left out anything, guys, help me out. So uh, just mainly getting us up to date where we're at on a prep for our black top and and chip and seed. Okay. Um, if there's no uh, Joe waving his committee report on the wage scale because it ties in with the next presentation, so I want to call Chase Vinson and Kenny Autry up for OCDA presentation. Well, it's uh, time for me to give you all my quarterly report, uh, but given the length of this meeting. I'll just uh, I'll run through these bullet points, and if you have any questions, I'll answer them for you. I, I won't you know dive into them. Uh, you have a, a, a printed copy of the report before you there. Um, we were able to complete the uh, soundproof wall project at the hub. We uh, took out the wall between what was the living room and the dining room of the hub, opened it up, and put in a retractable soundproof wall so that, that room could be used separately or as a, or a large open room for larger groups. <laughs> And we have had a couple people use it uh, as uh, the large single room. That was done with money that was left over from the renovation grant, so we should be able to close that out now. Um, we've hosted several private be uh, business meetings there. We had one new full-time tenant, and we've had several requests uh, since we did a marketing campaign on Facebook to help get the word out. Uh, we've got a few loan prospects in the pipeline. Uh, some just you know, take longer than others. Uh, we'll tell you that one uh, was denied just so you all know that we don't approve everything that, that comes across the table. Um, it was denied due to a, a lack of adequate security. So, you know, we are, you know, looking out for the court's interest and, and try to do, uh, be, be prudent stewards of that money. Um, we're working with skill training to expand uh, GED seekers in the county and push more adults into post-secondary education and apprenticeship programs. Uh, we still, unfortunately, lag behind the state average on those numbers. Uh, WPT opened up the new facility June 15th, uh, adding 40 new jobs. It's a $6 million project, so that's really good news. Um, they're still looking for uh, industrial maintenance technicians and industrial electricians. If, if anybody knows anybody out there, um, let, them, uh, let them know and, and hopefully they'll apply. Those are good paying jobs. What's the pay on that? Um, I would think at least 65 just from what I know of other industries. I haven't asked the Robins specifically. But um, just from what I know of, of that position and that, you know, uh, other places, uh, other businesses around the county, that would be a uh, We were recently awarded a $99,000 grant. We just got notification in June uh, from USDA Rural Development for additional coding training and to assist in staffing an additional person uh, to help with business and entrepreneurial assistance. And that's what I'll go into a little bit more after I'm done uh, as far as the wage committee. 
We launched uh, the Ohio County Chamber of Commerce as a shop local Ohio County e-gift e card program. That's to incentivize uh, local shopping to circulate more money throughout the local economy. I uh, attended the uh, Kentucky Association for Economic Development Spring Collaboration Conference. Uh, in that, uh, Deputy Bevington, or, or not Deputy, I'm sorry, uh, he is the commissioner now. He used to be Deputy Commissioner. Uh, commissioner Bevington unveiled a uh, product development initiative that they're, that the cabinet is rolling out in conjunction with the Association for Economic Development. They're uh, appropriating $3 million a year for three years to help assist communities in making their industrial sites more attractive. Uh, that is going to require a match. It's in its early stages still, uh, but that's that's all we know so far. Um, we anticipate that we're probably you know going to use some of the TVA money that's coming in uh, for the matching component of that. We're looking at possibly building a spec building. I know that the Industrial Foundation spec building out in Industrial Park East that make it for a long time, um, but. You know, we, we hear from the cabinet that the uh, inventory of, of spec buildings around the state has really diminished in the past couple of years mm -hmm. and that they're moving pretty quick. So uh, if that's the trend, then we want to be on it. Um, and I'm sorry, I know I delved in a little bit on that one. I'll, I'll try to stick to the bullets here. Uh, attended the USDA eConnectivity Summit in Somerset to learn about USDA distance learning and telemedicine grants. Um, as you all heard from uh, the gentleman with Kentucky Wired a few meetings ago, uh, that's scheduled to be completed in 2020, but uh, we still have no word on pricing, which I think is an integral piece in, as far as uh, what benefit that will have for our citizens. We're in the final stages of the $65,000 trail, uh, the, the trail Town Grant for the paddling access points. I'm awaiting the engineer's cost estimate to send to DLG and hopefully we can begin construction. Working with the City of Beaverdam's retail consultant to identify retail gaps in prospective businesses, uh, assisted new business in finding a commercial location, assisted a business in looking for a new location for an expansion, working with Prita, which is Paradise Park, on a gas line expansion, uh, working with uh, Grita, which is Bluegrass Crossings, on uh, and Atmos, the existing partner there, on gas line expansion plans for Bluegrass Crossings. We, we have enough gas currently for probably one more uh, client the size of what we have there. And after that, we'd be looking at uh, a pretty huge project because the line that they have coming down through Beaver Dam really can't support anymore. Thankfully, we have a long haul transmission line that, that runs um, south alongside the east side of the National Parkway. But it would be costly to, to bring that underneath the parkway and, and tap into that. So we're trying to get a concrete plan because when you have a prospect ask you for information they want to know you know what's available and, and if it's not available how long would it take to, to get there and uh, we still have two open projects we're still in the running for two projects at bluegrass crossings we were in the running for three uh, one of them uh, announced they were going to northern kentucky they wanted to be close to the uh, amazon prime area so lost out on that one but still having two open projects is, is a lot more than than what we've had in my prior years here. So that's certainly good news. And you all heard from uh, Mark Knight, I believe at the, the last meeting, I wasn't able to attend, but this is really good news. You know, they're undergoing a $30 million expansion, adding 150 jobs. And, you know, that's the equivalent of getting somebody new, really. You know, I, I, I tell people it's it's a challenge to, to think of it that way in your mind because they're here, they're already our largest employer, what's 150 more jobs, but I mean, people go wild across the state if they get a new a new place at 150 jobs. So that's really how you need to think about it. And you heard what their pay yeah. was last and time. And you know, our, our, our existing business is really the other day when he was totally uh, surprised. our greatest tool in economic development as far as new industry attraction. Because if they're not doing well, then who else is going to come here? You know, how are they going to staff their people? So back to the $99,000 grant and what I really want to focus our time on is um, $44,000 uh, of that I hope to uh, use for an additional staff person under me, uh, specifically an assistant director. Uh, ever since last July when we terminated our contract with distance assistants, um, we've been uh, short-staffed, I guess you'd say. We, we do have a receptionist over at the hub that we don't have to pay anything for. She's part of Work to Learn program with OCTC. Uh, she is helpful, but um, really looking for someone that could 
take on some of the duties that, that I currently uh, perform. Um, so th then the rest of the grant money will be used for an additional round of coding training. Um, our coders right now, I think they're slated to graduate in September or October. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get another round started. Um, I was able to get uh, additional money for that because it'll be uh, instruction in a different coding language. Um, the original one was in Java, and this one will be in um, C++.NET coding. Uh, both are in high demand, uh, but they're, I'd have to explain the, the stack of, of software development, but they have different functions in the software development world, but both in high demand. Uh, but I met with the wage committee uh, last week to uh, get a, uh, a classification added to the, the wage list, uh, I guess is, is what he referred to it. And I would just ask for your approval of, of that wage classification. Um, we have $12,000 uh, for an assistant uh, that I use as matching funds for the 44 that that will be that will go to this person. Um, uh, if you're worried about you know where is this money going to come from in the future, all I can assure you is that you know we have more TVA money coming in the future. Uh, Ann, and, Ann and I have talked about you know ways that we could uh, potentially shift some of the occupational tax money. Uh, that's currently being used to pay debt service on the water plant expansion that happened back in 11, I believe. Uh, so th there's there's potential out there, and there's always potential for other funding sources. But this will be really beneficial to our operations, uh, you know, for the time being, for this year, and I, and I hope that, that you will approve it. The uh, wage committee on the on on their part of <clears throat> what we looked at is he had a contract labor as his assistant and he had 12,500 left from what you normally no, uh, get. Our, you uh, our assistant budget used to be higher. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, that, that's uh, much 12, left. 12,000 is what was spent oh, okay. the prior year. So that's what the, what, that's what the uh, next year's budget was dropped to, thinking that that's all we needed. But and it's, of course, that's not enough money to hire anybody on. Right, and at the time he was using contract labor for what he needed to right to use, and what he was, what their demand was. But now they've decided to go in another other avenue, other contract labor, and actually hire someone using this grant, and where that would fit in on our wage scale, because it would actually be not contract; it would be a, a person falling in as a, as assistant uh, director under him, and where we would be on the wage scale. So we met and we looked at that. And, you know, we got a place where it would fit in on the weight scale, and uh, you know, it's really, you know, you refer to it as admin position, but it's it's you're looking at fulfilling your position that you was fulfilling with contract labor. Yeah, when this organization was established, there was always, there was always uh, a place for an assistant, um, but over time, due due to our uh, ability to to get you know that uh, position fulfilled on a contract basis and, and done uh, cheaper and also with the TBA money coming in uh, you know our budget has really been cut to where we don't we don't have the money currently to, to add anybody else uh, and we're lucky that, that we've been able to to get this grant to, to take care of it for a year and like I said I'll continue to look for other funding sources um, we'll cross that bridge when we get there but uh I would say we take care of the, the, this year. Uh, I don't see that uh, that that we have to know exactly how we're going to fund it after this, or if we do. You know. Well, I don't judge. I don't have a problem with because uh, Chase has got the uh, grant to pay for it. But now this is as far as uh, my input on it. It would be on a one year yearly basis. If you can find the money, I'm on board. But uh, for us to create another job at forty some thousand dollars, and uh, and then time to put the fringes and the, everything on it, you're looking at probably sixty or better. It's, and all of us up here know the know our budget. But I don't have a problem doing it. If you can get the money, I'll be on board. Well, be but uh, well, again, um, you know, we we are originally slated to have an assistant. I started, you know, this organization 
uh, on my own. And then when it came time to find an assistant, the best path, path forward was the, the contract that we signed and, and, and had for you know a couple of years there. And uh, unfortunately, we had to terminate that, and, and here we are, you know, looking yeah. for assistance. And you know, we were originally slated to for this organization to operate with $150,000 in occupational tax money, and you know, we've we've never seen that. Even in our first year of operation, uh, our operating budget was supposed to be 50,000. Well, we actually did have 50,000, but we only used 19 of it. So every year thereafter operating budget even though we were starting up and you know you would think that as, as things develop and we implement more programs that we're going to need more money it has stayed uh, had stayed static at, at 19,000 until this TVA money came in and you know our uh, our operating budget was supplanted with that TVA money but we didn't you know there was never any assistant money added back so uh, you know, you can look at it as adding a position, but there there was supposed to be a position there. You know, from the get go, it's just taking us. Are are we needing are we needing a motion to allow y'all to OC to to run this ad? Is that to proceed with the process? I'm frankly not sure. Uh, uh, I was told that that I had to get approval by the fiscal court uh, for this wage classification okay. before I could hire this person. But the money is there. The the grant has been yeah. awarded. And you know, I just I'm waiting for approval from you all to to, to run the uh, run the ad for the hire. And, and on the wage committee, all we look at is is where it falls in. So we're we're being we're not weighing something way heavy, you know, versus what it is. We don't get people out of out of uh, sync on where we're paying. You know what I mean? The uh, so that's all we did on the wage committee. Not not looking at whether he should add or shouldn't add it. Just where it would fall. And, uh, and I'll say that the grant money, uh, the 44 plus our 12 is, what, 57? You know, that's, uh, that's we're anticipating a person at around $35,000 a year to, to someone that can come in and be able to hit the ground running, taking on some of the duties, duties that I'm currently doing. Um, so that, that is anticipating salary and benefits. You, you gave it a little bit. Oh, okay. right, that four. was and benefits. That was part of what the wage committee did. We kind of looked at where they were. Well, what, what was the actual wage? Uh, so, hourly wage. Th no. Well, yearly wage. Yeah. Thirty-five. We're anticipating thirty-five thousand dollars. That's what yeah. we have enough money yeah. with the grant to pay some. Yeah. Well, what I was saying, and I, I did rather the number was a little too high, but uh, Our, in, in today's world, in the county we live in, with retirement, the, the cost right there is is uh, 20 some percent just in retirement end of it. So you take 20 percent of 35,000, it shows you how that can escalate up there to 25 or 50. And on, a, on an hourly basis, what, what was the wage? 1459, yeah. wasn't it? It was on the same level as your occupational tax administrator and chief deputy clerk. Yeah. assistant director to that line item. And so whatever the scale that was, and I gave that to Chase. Yeah, um, the higher rate is uh, $14.59, uh, with level one, $15.64, level two, $16.68. But I, I would submit that, you know, we have the money to hire someone at 35 yeah. And I'd like to tell you, Chase, I don't have a problem with it, but as far as my vote will be from year to year, and I'm not going, I'm not going to commit to it on down the road cause. and just to clarify because i was on the committee and i've done a lot of speaking already uh, we just looked at where the wage fell that was my job on the committee now separate from that you know i viewed my issues with it i'm a year year to year okay uh, where do we get the money and, and where we're yeah. going to pay for it from there yeah. on and i have no problem with the adding it chase has done oc has done well about going out and getting their grant yeah, they have. they've and, done very well I'm, you know They've been working hard to get them, and, and they're they going to have to work a little harder if they want to be here. Probably, year. probably so. And so, I don't have a problem with that. But my my issue is where we get it from there on. And, and my stance is is if we well, don't have the money, if we don't have here, we don't have. then then I'm, I'm you know it's a it's a yeah. position that would get terminated. Yeah. And, I, and my, like, point, like I said, even internally, you know, there may be mechanisms that we have to uh, pay, you know, some current. Some things that we're currently paying occupational tax dollars with uh, and using the TV money instead 
in freeing up the occupational tax money yeah. to to fund this organization at the level that it was originally intended. Okay. So I'll make a motion. We had the assistant director. Is that a, is that right? Assistant director to that same line, and also in that motion that we run that. For okay. A, I do hear a second. I'll second. On that. Second, Joe. Just to oh, call. Pull up. No, no, run that motion by me again. Yeah, so say it one more time. Because we've had trouble with motions here before. I just want to make sure that I'm on the right motion. Well, well Brandon can read it back to you after Sam. Is this on? I've met my bottom line question is, uh, Sam, is this year to year? Yeah. Let, let Joe that. Joe and I and you now all agreed to that. Okay, let, let, that, let, let the it, motion reflect that. This it is just goes the, year to year. This is just to put it on the weight scale at that line item, Larry, and to uh, run the ad. Oh, okay. we're, we're not even. I thought this. I thought this was hard. No, I thought this was the hard. employee, I, I believe, it's tenured. Every everybody's hired at will and can be terminated at any time. Yeah, so they'll they'll have to advertise. I know how that is, Chase. I've sat on this court 29 years and I've never seen nobody terminated yet. <laughs> so once they get into government, it's there and it's locked in and. And then the poor old town of taxpayers will pick up I won't be here forever, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I won't either. <laughs> but that was something that was highly talked about, Larry, because I said, you know, once you add something, it's hard to, yeah. Yeah. Right. to read it back, back. Miranda. Well, okay, nobody. So you want to add an assistant director to the wage scale and advertise, but the assistant director is a year to year basis. Well, we don't have to add that now. I mean, we can do that later after you get your. To add the assistant director to the wage scale on a year to year basis on the line item is. Uh, tax administrator and uh, and uh, chief deputy. We don't have to do the hiring tonight, even on the one one year basis. We can and just run do ad. the advertising, and then you've got the wage scale. And to run an ad. Okay. You had said what rate yet? Uh, Fourteen fifty nine start now. Fourteen fifty nine. No, that uh, that would be thirty, I believe, uh, thirty five thousand. Which I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm not going to pretend to understand what Rate makes, to be determined what makes it level one and level two, that? but like I that said, we work. have enough money okay. for to hire someone at $35,000 a $35, base salary. So if you're fine with it being for this year, you know, I would submit that that's well, what we hire. It comes then, out to 1683. And then this is where but we're getting to the weight scale thing again. We've got a higher rate and we've got a level one and level two, and we usually hire at the higher rate and then we move them up as they proceeded to, to have done well. You know that's what we did tonight with the uh, road department. Uh, we had so a guy hiring. Some description that calls for four years college, business degree, and all that, with some of the other plus don't call for, I believe. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Well, I don't know. If, I don't know if there, were, if there was a, a wage scale for my position when I when I was hired, but uh, you know I don't know that there's been any leveling of of a CETA director. So. Yeah. We well, we're, we're I know one thing, the court, uh, the magistrates have never moved up to any kind of level. We didn't yet. have a uh, wage scale <laughs> committee or even a wage scale set at the time you were hired in. I would just admit, we have the money, you know, to hire somebody at 35000 I did, didn't pull that money, uh, that number out of thin air. That's what I believe it's going to take to find someone. Does that, that include the fringes, Chase? Huh? Does that include the fringes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have the I have the money to be able to pay somebody a thirty five base salary. Is it not is, well, is that insurance and everything? Yes. Thirty five ain't no, but, but they have the money for it. For all money. It's about forty five or something. You're talking about pension and insurance. Yes. Yes. Okay. I have forty four thousand dollars to couple okay. with R twelve to pay someone a thirty five base and all the benefits that go along with it. Okay. Okay, we're gonna advertise. Let's vote. Let's go. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so now we're putting on what scale we're advertising that is? No, I should put rate to be determined upon hire. Okay. Yep. I would recommend doing it at the higher rate, but because that's what you do at all, but yes. Johnson? Yes. Count? Yes. More of you? Yes. Small. Yes. Thank you. Okay. That's done. Okay, now we're down to the magistrates. Mr. Small. Uh Miranda was uh, rather mad in that same moment. Yes. Okay. Uh, I have nothing to do. Uh, Jason. No. Uh, Joe, and don't forget the thing you and I talked about before the meeting. When I'm going to bring up. Okay. When we came out of the road committee meeting, it prompted me 
on the uh, we have a uh, seasonal position open that we need to fill. We've actually not filled it. Uh, we need to run an ad so we can fill it because we. That's probably one reason why we've been a little behind on our mowing and some of our other projects because we need to fill that season. So have we got? I'd like uh, to make a motion to run an ad for a seasonal road department. It's in the budget. We'll have to ring it back to hire him anyway. Well, uh, my question was, you know, when we did this last time, we said we had so many extra people. Do we not have anybody that filled out the application, went through the process that's out there available now that we never called? I don't think so. I believe we went through the whole bank. Okay. That's I'll second good. it. That's I good. mean, I know what you're saying, Larry, because I'd like to go ahead and go in. Yeah, me too. But at the same time, I think we're looking at all I the think, I think the I think we pulled from all the ones we've had available. Yeah. So I thought we had several. I thought the last year we had several of them, and we couldn't even harm all, yeah. harm all the seasons. Well, it went to the. We went through our bank and got everybody that was qualified. Yeah. Or that so we I think worked now we're that. trying to get a, a whole new. Whole new bunch of people. Yeah, yeah. I'll, as long as their application is within that six, within the six months, I'll pull those back out. But then, you know, anybody else. Yeah. I, I was just so thinking. Yeah, and I was just thinking that last year we had the prior year, prior to that we didn't, we couldn't find nobody. Yeah. But yeah. last year we had more than yeah, we needed. I don't. And I'm think like I, Joe. I'd like to have them click, yeah. click, click. But I don't think we saw anybody in the applications. Yeah. May not. To. May not. Okay. But they can go ahead and start looking through any of them yeah. if we got any yeah. left. Yeah. But yeah. let's go ahead and get right. to add. Okay. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Uh, uh, Opposed like that. That motion carries. Anything else, Joe? Uh, no. Larry. No. No. Just, no judge, thank you. If nobody else has anything for the good of the body. And what do we have on our roadmap? Uh, we are just waiting on the state to get their accounting system lined out. And we think that's going to be. I, I have no idea. But the money's up there. Just, yeah. Well, no, it's close there. I'm just wondering how yeah. we're going to get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's a. Man, I'm going to have the money up there. And then. Yeah. Are you hurting more on the FEMA money when it's coming in? Uh, you ain't going to see that FEMA money this year, Joe. Yeah, I don't think so, but I mean, I'm just... <laughs> Only thing... The last thing I heard, they're still working on getting... I think by the time we see the FEMA money, it, it'll go towards next year. Yeah. Uh, it'll, it'll be next November, probably. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say, this means adjournment.